Jesus Christ! <sighs> Welcome to Carter's Retro Reviews. Uh, sorry I'm a little late, I was busy pinching a loaf. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're reviewing NBA action for the Sega Saturn today. And um, it says here, colour commentary by Marv Albert. First of all, that is racist. The guy is white as a sheet. He is, there's no colour commentary there. Colour commentary. Actually, you know what? It's because he uses colourful language. Colour commentary, don't you guys get it? He'll be like, and Jordan's going down the court, and he fucking scored again. Fuck sake, we've got 50 bucks on the other team. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> An exclusive sports title on the Saturn? Never thought I'd ever hear of such a thing. I can't see anything anywhere to contradict that information like it was given another name on the PlayStation, but that wouldn't surprise me either. NBA Action, also known as NBA Action 96, was a part of the NBA Action franchise funnily enough, and is the fourth entry behind NBA Action 94 and NBA Action 95 starring David Robinson on the Sega Mega Drive and Sega Game Gear. The game was released on the Sega Saturn in 1996 in only the US and PAL regions, as it didn't get a Japanese release. The main problem with reviewing a game like this is you're always going to compare it against another game, and that might not be fair when they're going for two very different things. In this case, I was thinking of all the fun I could be having playing NBA Jam TE, while playing this was completely the opposite. I kept looking at my watch going, <sighs> okay, so how much longer do I have until I can say I've played this long enough? Did you know that NBA Action was once set to be released in the arcades, running on Sega Titan video hardware? Until they actually played the game and said, oh wait, is this the game that we were going to release in the arcades? Yeah, let's, uh, well, let's not do that. And the Saturn got a port instead. Presentation of the game is actually a massive highlight. Granted, I spent 10 minutes wandering around the menus to find out how to get to the actual game. About 5 minutes in, I was thinking, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the reason you've never heard of this game. Because it's all menus and simulations like the countless editions of Football Manager. But after working through the menus, which have a lot of detail throughout, I managed to find the game. What I couldn't find was the option menu. Seems like a pretty big oversight. I thought most games develop the option screen first, and then just the rest of the game follows. The presentation of the menus were pretty good with the colour scheme that works with the game. It's practical and stylish. In-game was quite good because we didn't get a lot of fluff, even though it was pretty standard in terms of screen space and style. The graphics were a bit of a surprise. I've not seen 3D with such fluid animation on the Saturn that was neither the Sega branded one-on-one -on -one fighters or dead or alive. The crowd looks pretty amazing considering the age of the game. The colours chosen were all reasonable with nothing that really pops nor anything incredibly dull. I've noticed in a few other basketball games a reflection from the ceiling lights, where that sort of detail seems to be missing here. But if that's all it takes to get much better animation, then I can't be too disappointed. Up close the players look fucking ridiculous, but for the time, I bet this was actually quite good all things considering. People thought the thick polygons of centering boxing looked good for their time, so this by comparison is better, but not everything was peaches. Some of the key issues go hand in hand with the gameplay, so I'll cover those off there. The sound was purely sound effects of the shoe screeching around the court. I don't know how music in a basketball game would go, but I think it could work. The whole experience was quite minimal, but even then, this could be forgiven if there wasn't one aspect of this game that had me a little bewildered. It's short. Smith. So okay, the gameplay had me a little bewildered. Like, all of the time. All your standard basketball rules applied, okay, that part was normal. It's just that it felt less like a basketball game featuring two teams at odds for the title, and more like the Harlem Globetrotters, that's the opposing team, and whoever the fuck the Harlem Globetrotters always beat, representing my team. He's spinning the ball on his finger! Just take it! Take the ball! That game was fixed! They were using a freaking ladder, for God's sakes. The only thing missing was the theme song. I spent most of the time wandering around the court going, 
Where am I? Okay, how do I get that ball off him? Okay, where the fuck am I now? Jesus Christ! The controllers were as responsive as that jeep that was hacked and ran off the road is to the hackers. Not the driver, and that is to say that they were pretty good in case you got lost in that far reach for a metaphor. The biggest problem, and this goes hand in hand with the graphics which I haven't covered off yet, was the angle. I couldn't see anything most of the time, and when I could, there was no detail where there should be, like stealing the ball. And this is not detail in part of the game that never happens, no 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 no. Stealing the ball is as much as the scoring. In NBA Jam T, okay, they don't really focus on it either, but the mechanic works because we can still make a swipe and feel like, okay, if we'd lined that up and timed it a bit better, we'd have a better chance of getting it. Not because the game was on some angle that made it hard for me to see what I'm doing. Rebounding at the other end of the court was just jumping and praying you're somewhere actually close enough to not be making a fool of yourself. If you're trying to emulate coverage of a basketball game on TV, you might have done a pretty good job of it for the time, but it doesn't help the gameplay at all. There is plenty around in replayability with different modes, so this is not really where the weakness is. Would I recommend this game? No, absolutely not. There are a few reasons why you would like this game. For a 3D basketball game, they've done some aspects really well. Unfortunately, the core gameplay is not one of them. You can't even say that maybe back in the day this might have passed into recommendation territory because better basketball games came out before this and after this. And even during this era, you will find better basketball games. It's just one I wouldn't bother with. Hi everybody, I'm Marv Albert. Another exciting basketball season is upon us, so let's hit the court for some f***ing pace NBA action.